Welcome to Fitness Explain, the podcast. I'm your host, Mill Waller. I'm a third year sport and exercise science student, and I have a passion for exercise and helping others create a balanced and healthy lifestyle through understanding the science behind health and fitness. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the third episode of Fitness Explain the podcast. I hope we are all having a great week. Uh, this week, what I want to talk about is supplements, all things supplements. Uh, however, it's not going to be every single supplement in the world because there are so many on the market. And I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create an episode like this, because it's pretty confusing when you just go into a health food store or any supermarket and there's just this massive wall of supplements and there's so much going on. So yeah, and so if there if there isn't any, sorry, if there is a supplement that I haven't mentioned today, uh, let me know and I might create a part two uh, for other supplements like maca powder and stuff. I don't really know much about it but would be super interested in researching it. I haven't um, done anything like that today. What I am focusing on are supplements that are normally associated with exercise like BCAAs, uh, EAAs, uh, protein, creatine, uh, stuff like that Um, and the pros and cons, when we should take it, who should take it, uh, things like that. Uh, But first, I want to talk about the item, exercise, product, task, or food I've been enjoying in the past week. Now, I found this product like a month ago, maybe, maybe more. I don't know. I was just like in the words of Coles, I forget. And uh, I found the Golden Bakery Crumpets, which I have always loved. I love crumpets, any brand. But this brand has a whole meal variety and that I I was like so excited. Okay, I know pretty lame to be excited about something (laughs) as silly as crumpets, but oh my gosh, I really do love crumpets. They're like the perfect size and they're like a really good texture. I'm a big texture person. Like taste, I'm like not that fussed about, but if something has a bad texture, I don't like it. Um... So yeah, these I've been really loving um, for breakfast especially. So like that sanit- uh, sanitary and peanut butter. So 100% peanuts, peanut butter on them. Two of them toasted or some avo with like a sunny side up egg or scrambled eggs on top or mushrooms. Oh, best breakfast ever. Alrighty, so the thing I want to talk about before talking about any supplements specifically is that why would someone need to take a supplement in the first place? Uh, So the general consensus for that is if you aren't getting enough of that nutrient in your diet naturally, then maybe you could consider supplementing it with a supplement Um, as basically as basic as that sounds. um, That's the main reason why you would want to take a supplement. So what can happen if we overdo it or underdo it on a supplement? So certain nutrients like vitamin C, if you take too much of it, you'll just pee it out. And most people in developed countries are eating enough uh, fruits and vegetables. Having said that, most people aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables. But most people are eating enough vitamin C uh, because of Uh, foods like citruses fruits and greens um, because they contain a lot of it vitamin c Um, so why vitamin c is so important though wow we can hear the bins in the background it's really glamorous light (laughs) sorry Um, vitamin c why it's so important is it helps with our um, iron absorption And so iron, obviously, some people are not getting enough of it. And that's why we have to make sure that we have enough vitamin C so that then um, our absorption of iron is okay. And then alternatively, you can overdo it on certain vitamins like vitamin D um, and other nutrients. And uh, there also, I found, is a myth floating around um, about protein and that it's bad for your kidneys if you have too much of it. First of all, protein is pretty hard to overdo because it's super easy to track, whether it's on a fitness app or roughly estimating in your head like I do. Secondly, most people aren't getting enough protein uh, and that's why it's pretty hard to overdo it. So uh, whenever I talk to people, they're like, oh, I don't know if I should take a protein supplement because um, I'm worried about taking like um, it being bad for me, whatnot. 
that's very unlikely and very much so an extreme. So unlikely of that happening, yeah. Um, But that leads me on to protein supplements. So there is a massive variety of protein supplements. Uh, When you go into a health store or wherever it be where you get supplements, the vast majority of that wall is protein-related supplements. Um, And there's so many different types. Like there's vegan ones made from hemp or peas or brown rice. And then there's non-vegan ones like whey isolate or concentrate. So whey isolate is absorbed a little bit faster than whey concentrate. And so what, and so I take that personally because I want to get protein in as fast as I can. Having said that, whey concentrate also has benefits because it can keep you a little bit more full than uh, isolate does so that's why someone might favor concentrate over isolate um, but when I am picking out a protein supplement I look on the back of the ingredients oh, sorry on the back of the product for the ingredients and I want to see um, isolate as the first ingredient so if it's not the first ingredient don't don't have it <laughs> if you are taking a protein supplement protein should be the main ingredient i think that's pretty logical but having said that a lot of companies don't do that and that's one of the cons of proteins a lot of brands put a lot of crap in their stuff that's that's with any supplement going around really um there are good ones and there are bad ones um and although i don't like to say there are good foods and bad foods (laughs) there are definitely some protein supplements out there that aren't really great Um, so when I am picking a supplement, I always make sure to look at the ingredients before buying one. So yeah, um, other nasties in there can be stuff like artificial colors and flavors, uh, and sugar that your body just doesn't really need. Um, there are plenty of naturally sourced, that doesn't really make any sense. Let me reword that. Uh, there's plenty of supplements, protein supplements out there that have, plenty of great ingredients in there and that's why there should really be no reason to take one a supplement that doesn't have great ingredients um the personally the ones i take are the at health australia ones the vanilla bean and chia flavor um and then now this one is also saying it has a weight loss blend. I do not take it for the weight loss blend. I just like it cuz it tastes good. <laughs> Um, I seriously doubt this has any effect on weight loss. Why does it, let's read why it helps us with weight loss. Oh, because it burns fat and increases energy. So that is what we call a lie. (laughs) Um, yeah, I just like it because of the ingredients. I think the ingredients are really good in it. Um, and it tastes good because I'm really particular about my protein, um, taste. There's also, um, this brand called Botanica Blends. I really, really love this one because of the ingredients. It's even better than the last one I mentioned, but, um, I haven't tried, I don't know if they have a vanilla flavor, but if they do, I probably should try it next. Um, but I have the apple pie flavor. It's really good. I, so if I'm feeling like, uh, say a smoothie that's a bit more fruity in flavor, I'll go for this one. And then if, if I'm feeling for like a smoothie that um, is a bit more creamy, then I'll go for the vanilla one, you know, just making sense. I wouldn't put apple pie in like a chocolate and peanut butter smoothie because that would be gross. I mean, maybe it's good, but, you know, I can't imagine it being. And um, that's another thing that I wanted to talk about for the cons of protein supplements. Okay. Please listen to me. This is an announcement, a public service announcement. Do not take protein supplements for the purpose of weight loss. Why, you ask? Okay, first of all, it plays into fads and I am not one to promote or support or have any interest for fads. Reason why is because, okay, cool, you've lost your weight, you're feeling great, (laughs) <laughs> I'm a limerist, I'm a <laughs> yikes, uh, um, sorry, back to the topic, um, so, okay, you've lost some weight, feeling really healthy and fit, you've got your life sorted, feeling great in all parts of yourself, your chakras are aligned, whatnot, okay, awesome, good for you, okay, now you've reached your ideal weight, so what are you going to eat now? You can't just eat protein supplements for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
that's a bit silly. Um, you're not going to get the, all the nutrients you need in them. Um, and how, how do you know what to cook and what to eat now that you're not eating protein supplements anymore? So, and that's what can happen. What can, sorry, what can happen is we go back into our old habits of eating really poorly, um, and that sort of. And so, yeah, that's one reason. Um, second reason is that they don't work. <laughs> um, I think that should be the main reason someone doesn't take something. Yeah, um, it it's just brands taking advantage of people's naivety and that's one thing that I really do not condone in the health industry is promoting stuff that doesn't work and that isn't scientifically proven to work um yeah so we all know eating a healthy balanced diet and being active having a regular active regime in place uh, whether it be running going to the gym tennis swimming etc that's going to have the best effects for weight loss and having a healthy lifestyle playing into fads like weight loss shakes that is not going to help overall and in the long term with um your health i i just yeah that's that's the downside that's another downside about the fitness industry is just how overly marketed it is and um that's one of the cons of protein now, moving on to BCAAs, or also known as branch chain amino acids. So the main reason someone would want to take them is um, because of the hype around it, <laughs> um, or because they can increase the amount of amino acid availability in your body, which consequently can help with muscle recovery. And how this works is when we take BCAAs, it increases the amount of amino acids in our blood plasma or the non-blood part of our blood. <laughs> so the, the part that doesn't have the red blood cell in it or the white blood cell in it um, and in our muscles as well. Um, and so what happens when we exercise is our muscles get a little bit damaged and those amino acids then help to repair the damaged tissue. And if you have more amino acids, it might help you recover a little bit quicker than if you weren't taking BCAAs. And it has been shown that BCAAs, um, when taken in combination with regular resistance training, that they can help with muscle recovery and hypertrophy. Uh, as same thing with protein, make sure there is no crap in your supplements. Read the ingredients. Don't buy because it looks shiny and cool and it's got great color schemes and it will go with the rest of your supplements. <laughs> Don't do that. Read the ingredients. Check um, if there's anything nasty in there like, I don't know, nicotine <laughs> i'm joking no there's no nicotine in bcaas um but just make sure there's nothing bad for you in there and research every single ingredient you should know what is going into your body um and also another thing that's good about bcaas is that um they help you consume more water say if i'm your, your average joe drinking two bottles of mm, one liter water a day and then i go to the gym Compared to a day where I'm not going to the gym, I'm going to need more water on the day that I exercise. So if you're going to have a drink of water with you and the, the flavor of the BCAA um, helps you drink more water, then that's a great thing and I'm not going to argue with that. The only thing um, I would say don't take a BCAA for is if you are exercising like once a week and then you're going to be that... <laughs> you've got all the gear and no idea sort of approach where you've got all these supplements, but you're exercising in the gym once a week. It, it just doesn't really make sense, does it? Um, and now BCAAs now lead me on to EAAs, which are similar to BCAAs uh, because they both contain amino acids and that's the main ingredient. As with protein, um, as, as some form of essential amino acid should be the first ingredient. It shouldn't be a flavor. It shouldn't be sugars, anything like that. Uh, so an essential amino acids, they are as amino acids that body cannot produce and need to ingest through the, your diet. Um, and then the only way that EAAs and BCAAs differ is that EAAs contain all nine essential amino acids and BCAAs have three. So leucine, isoleucine and valine or valine. I'm not really sure on that pronunciation, to be honest, um, 
But yeah, um, anyway, moving on. So why take one over the other? Well, uh, EAAs increase protein consumption and they can be good for vegans who might struggle with getting all nine uh, essential amino acids in and BCAAs are typically for those like myself who don't uh, who don't need extra protein in their diet and consume an adequate amount. Having said that, I don't take BCAAs. Might maybe potentially think about taking them, but for now, uh, I don't really need them. Um, maybe if I went to a dietitian, they'd be like, what are you doing? You need to take some BCAAs. But, you know, for now, my dietitian is saying, no, nope, you're good to go with nothing. <laughs> um, but having said that, you know, it's up to you to decide the pros and cons of BCAAs and EAAs and just take my advice and go with it or go, no, don't need BCAAs or do need BCAAs. Yeah. Now moving on to vegan supplements like B12, vegan omega-3 supplements, um, which are like made from seaweed, I'm pretty sure, and contain DHA and EPA, uh, which, you know, we normally see in fish and things and seafood and things like that. Um, now, I can't recommend a particular one for you. Obviously, supplements are case-by-case case specific. So, it, But if you are going vegetarian or pescatarian or vegan, I would recommend getting regular blood tests to make sure that your levels of uh, B12 and iron and things like that are at a healthy level and seeing a dietitian because uh, no matter how much research you do, the dietitian probably will know best and there are also plenty of vegan supplements out there for things like B12. Um, and the reason why I stress on B12 is because it only comes from animal products and fortified cereals and supplements too. But if um, if you are on a vegan diet, you will need to take a B12 supplement. No ifs or buts. <laughs> because you're not going to get it in your diet naturally. Um, and that is not a reason to deter someone from going on a vegan diet diet um, you can be perfectly healthy on a vegan diet and there's no reason not to be on one uh, unless you know your doctor doctor recommends otherwise but yeah um, talk to your dietitian if you're thinking about going vegan and there are also lots of vegan protein powders that have b12 in them too um, and then uh, as well another thing i want to mention about the botanica blends uh, protein is that they have essential amino acids in them too. So if you are struggling to get them in, uh, this brand is pretty good because they have it in there. Yeah. Uh, now moving on to glutamine. So sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. It's how I pronounce it. So deal with it. <laughs> so glutamine is a, an amino acid that the body can naturally make, but also not enough of the amount that we need. So we do need to take it from our diet. And from reading a journal article called The Effect Consumption of Glutamine Supplement on Aerobic Power, Anaerobic Power and Body Composition of Soccer Players, written by the Journal of Physical Education and Sport, have said that glutamine supplement has significance in increasing the effect of aerobic capacity, um, and that is because glutamine can increase exercise tolerance. So what does that mean? It, basically means that um, if you aren't getting enough of it in your natural diet, you should take it, number one. Um, but also if you are getting enough of it and you want to top up some glutamine stores because it might be able to help you run a little bit further because it can improve your, improve your aerobic capacity, sure, go for it. But as I said before, check with your dietitian. And also, if you're finding it works, okay, that's fine. But if you're finding it's not working and it isn't improving for you, then you don't really need to take it. Um, yeah, so same as BCAs, case by case specific. And now I want to move on to creatine. So what is creatine? Uh, so the body naturally has creatine in it. Um, just like all these other ingredients, uh, the body does have it, but you can also take it as a supplement. And it is a molecule and it is found in all our cells and it is a part of an energy system that we use to create energy. That was really butchered. Sorry. Let's start again. <laughs> so how the let's go back to the beginning of how the body creates energy in the first place. So what happens is the body creates energy through a molecule found in all our cells called adenosine triphosphate 
and how and what that looks like is that it is one adenosine molecule and three phosphate molecules hence triphosphate like a triscule meaning three um, and when that third phosphate molecule breaks off energy is created and then we call it adenosine diphosphate di meaning two uh, is create and then with that how are we going to get that atp back to to con ha sorry how are we going to get that adp to then become atp again so we can continue making energy because it wouldn't really make sense for our body to just keep churning out atp molecules so what happens is our body will use either carbs fats proteins or creatine phosphate or also known as cp to reattach that third molecule and now, now we call that energy system that uses CP to cre to create energy as the ATP CP system. So we only have enough creatine in our body naturally for about three to four seconds of movement, and that type of movement is very specific. It's not like going for a jog all of a sudden your ATP CP system kicks in for three seconds and then you're back to normal. Um, what our body will use it for is for really really fast uh, oxygen independent movements like and they're really powerful too like uh, weightlifting sprinting gymnastics those really powerful fast movements and taking a creatine supplement can increase the amount of creatine in your body so the ATP CP system can last a little bit longer and you won't have to rely on the slower systems uh, so that means you might be able to go that little extra bit, a couple extra reps in your weightlifting set. You might be able to perform a little bit stronger in your sprinting so you can use your ATP, CP system for longer in your sprint. You might use it for the, I don't know, 60% of your run instead of as the predominant fuel system instead of 40% of your run, for example. That's, that's numbers I've just pulled out of a hat. It's not actual uh, numbers. Um, and then also, um, there are some things going around like that it is bad for your kidneys, a bit like there's that myth about protein. Um, it's not bad for your kidneys at all. Uh, having said that, if you do have kidney disease or dysfunction or just kidneys aren't really performing to the extent that they should be, you probably shouldn't take these, you should, you shouldn't take creatine. And, uh, having said that, go get your kidneys checked out <laughs> um joking um no what i was going to say is that you should definitely seek medical advice before taking creatine because of the fact that if you do have poor kidney function and you don't know it then it could might have some detrimental effects um having said that don't be scared of supplements they aren't scary at all you just have to research them and make sure you're buying the right thing for you and that you aren't just buying it because of the great marketing campaign that that company has released for the supplement and finally i want to talk about sports drinks and pre-workout so sports drinks are only should only be consumed if you are regularly sweating and multiple times a week um, and for endurance sports like marathon running, footy playing, rugby, uh, what else is there, triathlons, ultra long swimming, stuff like that, where you're sweating a lot, um, or even if you're exercising outdoors in the heat for more than an hour or two. Um, and the reason is because there is so much sugar in these sports drinks, and if you aren't um, using enough energy you are just you know consuming more calories than you're putting out and so that's the reason why you really need to work for a while like more than an hour or two in order to need a sports drink and if you aren't sweating profusely then you aren't going to need to replace the electrolytes that you've in quotations lost like those um, Gatorade or Powerade ads claim that you are losing and then now pre-workout. Uh, pre-workout is a bit of a you are, you don't need pre-workout. It's um, a bit like coffee. You know you don't need coffee, but people have it anyway. 
Um, another thing, and you can, like coffee and all caffeine, you become dependent on these. So if you are just your average day person like myself who works out a few times a week, you probably do not need pre-workout. I'd only recommend pre-workout if you're a professional athlete or you're semi-pro and you're just really tired and you need that extra boost in order to train. Having said that, professional athletes should be making their own pre-workout, in my opinion, because of the WADA and ASADA rules and you never know what ingredient could be in the ones that aren't, that are just off the shelf. They could have ingredients that are illegal and you wouldn't know and then you can all of a sudden get caught with having uh, levels of certain like certain illegal substances in your body that are perfectly healthy, but you didn't know you had inside you. Um, and then also artificial sweeteners. There is controversy around them. Then, I mean, not controversy, but like um, differing opinions on them because some people say that there is research to say that they can be bad for our gut microbiome. Uh, having said that, there's evidence saying that it doesn't affect our gut microbiome. So my two protein supplements, those are the only protein supplements I take, and I take them about like twice a week at most. Um, they have stevia in them. I mean, to be honest, I don't really like the taste of artificial sugar, and that's why I like these ones the most, because they don't taste too artificial in flavor. Um, yeah, so each their own. If you don't want to take supplements because of the stevia in them, well, that's your prerogative, you know. <laughs> you don't have to. But, um, yeah, just thought I'd let you know that there is research, but there's a lot more research that needs to be done. And now moving on to when to take them. So for protein, always, always, always take it after your workout with some form of a carbohydrate, like a banana in a smoothie. Um, that is a really great way to go. Simple, easy, fast, and you should take it within 20 minutes, 30 minutes at most, but aim for 20 minutes. Um, within uh, after finishing your workout um, and that's for maximum protein absorption um, and the carbohydrates consuming them with the protein helps for absorption as well and then amino acids so bcaas and eaas uh, you can take them before during or after but most people prefer to take them during and creatine um, it doesn't really matter because it's just going to be in your body to use for later so um it's really whatever you want as long as you're taking it consistently, I guess. So having an alarm um, and taking it when that alarm goes off. And as always, for every single supplement out there, you should consult a medical professional like a GP or a dietitian to make sure it is right for you, that there aren't any uh, ingredients in there that are going to be detrimental to your health and to see that if you do actually need that supplement. And now let's move on to question of the week. Alrighty, so question of the week. So this week I got a DM asking about muscle soreness. So should they still train if their legs are still sore from the last workout they did? Or sh should they just push through the pain and stick to their routine? So before we talk about anything like that, there's... Good pain, there's bad pain. So are you feeling like DOM, so delayed onset muscle soreness, or are you feeling like maybe there's something wrong and that you sh if that's the case, if you're feeling like there's something wrong and you might be teetering on the edge of being injured, definitely go get that checked out with either your GP, physio, myotherapist, chiro, whoever you see normally or whoever you think is applicable for that injury. Um, if you've never seen anyone like that before, go to the, your GP and then they will recommend who to see from there. Um, secondly, if it's just DOMS, was the workout before too hard or was it just the right amount of hard? So challenging, but not completely passing out after challenging, challenging in the way that you get sore after, but then after a few days, you're fine. Um, or is it potentially maybe too much for you and you're pushing yourself just too much and if that's the case, maybe reevaluate what your sessions are looking like. Uh, also, are you recovering properly? Uh, are you getting the right amount of water and hydration in? Are you sleeping enough? 
after your exercise uh, after sorry your training and any day of the week really um, are you maybe drinking a little bit of alcohol after your training session which can also lead to further dehydration which then also impacts on your recovery are you getting the right amount of nutrients and protein in after training are you eating enough carbs um, that can be another thing that people don't really think about is that oh yeah carbs are bad whatever no carbs are good <laughs> carbs are freaking awesome um, and some people I think don't eat enough of them because they have that association with them being bad uh, that's a whole podcast within itself but just lightly touching on that um, so yeah are you recovering properly uh, also is your program pushing you too much? And then if that is the case, maybe consider seeing a trainer or getting a trainer to review your program just to make sure everything's in shape and nothing's uh, too much or too little for you. And yeah, that's what I'd have to say to recommend for that. Having said that, um, you don't have to train legs all the time. I think one thing about exercising is that it shouldn't be a chore it should be something you feel really awesome after and you should be excited to do I mean having said that some days I'm really tired but you know I've got to exercise because I know afterwards I'll feel awesome so it's listening to your body and evaluating what's what in the what for lack of a better term um so yeah uh listen to your body make sure you're getting enough rest make sure you're refueling enough you're getting that recovery in and if you are sore if you've done everything correctly and you're still pulling up a bit sore wow that noise thank you so much anyway if everything's going right and you're still feeling a bit sore you don't have to train uh that part of your body you can do something else to feel so you're still getting that workout in but it's not pushing yourself too much and you're not over training and you're not training the muscles that are sore because you know there's that whole hustle mentality and you got you got to train all the time and whatever but you got to make sure you're recovering just as much because i would one thing that i see a lot is people train through the pain and then it just deters them from exercising again and we want to make sure that we have a really healthy relationship with training and ourselves Thank you for that last comment from that machine in the background. And thank you so much for listening to this week. And now on to my final notes. Thank you so, so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. It's a bit of a longer one today. Sorry about that. If you had plans <laughs> and now you have to cut them short to listen to this. No, I'm joking. Don't do that. <laughs> but now um, just please chuck us a follow on at fitness underscore explain underscore by underscore mill on uh what is it called again instagram <laughs> yikes um and i would really appreciate it if you could like comment subscribe to this channel i would really appreciate that too as always it, we are going to be on spotify and apple podcasts as soon as i can it's just a matter of time getting there and me being technology deficit as i like to say <laughs> And also, if there are any points that I have discussed that you have more questions on, DM me or I have left the references in the description bar below. And please note that this podcast is general in nature. It is not tailored to your specific needs. If you are struggling with your mental, mental physical or health or well-being, please seek help from a medical professional such as a registered psychologist, reg registered qualified dietitian, registered GP, registered exercise scientist or physiologist. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.